Thank you for watching Meat Sauce and Money. I'm Matt Montgomery. He's Paul Meat Sauce Lambert. Paul, do you believe in karma? Uh, like the song by uh, Karma Chameleon? Uh, more than the song. Yeah, I believe in karma 100%. That's why I'm constantly nice to people, yes. except for people I hate. That's, uh, that's an interesting way. So yeah, you I believe be, in karma 100%. So you're pretty balanced. You, yeah. You're nice, but, but other people you hate. I'm full of hatred. So you're, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a weird blend. Yeah. You should live in here. It's a so lot going on. We're at Mystic Lake. Yeah. Uh, we Thursday, are? Thursday Night Lights. Yeah, it's our home. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're on the uh, M stage. They got us all lit up. Yeah, the I love I ask this about karma, place. You know how they treat us really nice. Yeah. They give us dinner. We get here early. You know, we help clean up a little bit afterwards. The here At least wails. Todd does. The, the, the buffet. Yeah, nice of Todd to uh, care. There was a gentleman in the Poor food Scott's area. Poor Scott's going to die. And no. he's like, well, i got to do something else. Be nice care. to Todd. Todd. Who's? No. Todd is we real can't this be nice. year. No. Yeah, Todd's great. So I the, love Todd. the karma question. Oh, sorry. A gentleman in the food area. Yeah? I found 100 bucks cash sitting right on the ground. Right there as I'm standing to order my sub. I pick it up. I tap this gentleman. I say, sir, this money's right here. Is this yours? And he goes, oh, yeah, that's mine. He just puts it in his pocket, turns around. And he tells me about like his uh, his winnings. Didn't say thank you. Didn't say oh okay. hey here's a twenty or anything. He just oh yeah that's mine. Foop. And I'm like, I wonder if I should have just let's see karma. I wasn't gonna be like oh that's mine. I'm just gonna take it. I'm Couple at a casino. Here, Matt. If I want to win money, I want to go out and do it. You're way else. too nice of a guy. Well, it's thank a casino. You. There aren't many people here that go that's not mine. Two was no, he dressed was, was he dressed like an Avery? He was an older man. An yeah, Avery it wasn't. like a Stephen Avery. Was he dressed like one of them? What's it? That what? means it's not his money. Do you oh, know, sure. You don't yeah, watch no, I know. Yes, you wanted to talk about that. I Do you not you were, have a TV? I thought you were using the word Avery like you use like no, Connors no, and no, Todds no, and no, no. I'm not Brandons that smart. and. But no, no. There's no way that was his money. No, it was his money. He was an elderly gentleman, and he had a wad yeah, in my his dad's pocket. Old. And he uses out. that garbage all the time. But he just says, oh. "I'm old." <laughs> no, you're not, Dad. Stop. Right. So you're you believe in karma? I think you did the right thing. He did not. When that. Yeah. When the karma police or whatever they talk about, he should have said, said, said thank you. Yeah. That's all or he, he just should have said no, but let's split it. Sure. Yeah. He could have. Yeah. I would have kept it. I but feel you're fine a about it though. Than me. See, I walk away feeling fine about that. Yeah, you should because you did been the right like thing. Dollars richer, but always do the right thing, kids. That's right. The Vikings karma. Yeah. Did it come back to bite him last week? Probably. Well, I think so. Is it as disappointing as the Buffalo Bills loss? No, because no. this team <clears throat> was down, <clears throat> excuse me, multiple starters. When yeah. you're without your best corner, when you're without your best linebacker, or when no. you're without multiple positions and you have to have Holton Hill, an undrafted free agent, yeah. sometimes guard the best, uh, best wide receiver in Michael Thomas in football, one of the best, yeah. you're in big trouble. Plus, you got, you know, you got a banged up Linval Joseph. No, I, mean, I think if they hang on to the ball, and we say that all the time. That seems to, like if you were to write a book on the Minnesota Vikings, it would be titled "If Only They Hung On to the Ball." Sure, they might have won. I mean, that, they were gonna, they were going in up possibly what? They were 13, 10? ten. They probably were yeah. gonna score. They could have gone up ten. Yeah, it ten. was, it was a See? whole right. Two it weeks a, in a row. That's a good. That's your only good impression. <laughs> it was a seven-plus <laughs> point swing. Except they go down at halftime. Yeah. Then they pressure. Then the Kirk Cousins of old comes out. Makes a couple mistakes, can't hang on to the football, and it all it all falls apart. They hang on to the ball. You go up seven or ten and or then twenty to ten to start the half. at home. Yeah. Plus you get the ball. Yeah. That momentum that might have been a different story. Absolutely. But do you think that one play? I think too many people are are saying that that play is really. I, I believe that that's where the game swung. Yes. But they went into half down four. Yeah. What happened at that halftime speed? You know. I don't think there was me, one. They, it must have just been. They, they just totally hung it up after that. They're yeah, like, yeah and whatever. I think, right, one big mistake, second half, the pick six. Was it Cameron Jordan that said this week, like, at part of, into the third quarter, you could feel them give up? Oh, wow. Which sucks. Yeah, like, that does. That's first why I thing, like, it's worse than Buffalo. Yeah, I, nah, because better competition. This might be a, this is as much as it pains me. And you think losing to the Saints pains me? Oh, you hate them. Wait till we get our guest up here. Oh, he, he yeah, hates the Saints yeah. more? Oh, yeah. You should have heard the things he was saying in Las Vegas. Do you Hilarious. Wanna say, do you want to say who our guest is this week? Yeah, John Creasel, one of the greatest human beings alive. I'm not kidding. One of your best friends. I mean, one of the best yeah. buddies. Oh, I love him. You win cheddar every time you yeah, go to Las he's Vegas. he's like a brother to me. You probably have. I'd him. trade him for my own brother because my own brother sucks. <laughs> he's annoying. We were in Vegas with him. That's why I went to bed all the time. He's annoying. You're annoyed by your real brother. Oh, yeah. But John well, he's Creasel, annoyed your, by me. your life brother. Yeah, is the best. You love him. So, yeah, I just think that it's one of those games where hopefully at the end of the season it sucks because unless they go on, 
the Saints go on some massive losing streak, you're going to have to go there in the playoffs, yeah. whether it's three against six, whether it's, you know, two, uh, two against three in the, in the next round or you're whatever it is. You're assuming that the playoffs are a thing. The Vikings will make the playoffs. The you, Vikings will win seven out of eight games. Your picks are coming very yeah. early. The Vikings will, yeah, they're fine. We're, we're, we're they're, talking they week just, nine. They, not, they almost beat a team with half their football team. Yeah. Half their I, offensive I, I, line is banged up. But, uh, no, the loss isn't that bad. It's a learning experience. A learning experience. A moral victory. Yeah. You believe in those? Yeah. Uh, so John Creasel is our guest this week. Yeah, his dad's actually here. Really? That's, well, we're going to have him on here, but the quicker we get there, we can get him up here. Uh, next week, former Viking quarterback Tommy Kramer is going to be our guest. Oh, really? Yeah, Thursday he is going to be here. So Tommy Kramer, tune in next week. Come wow. here Thursday night. Tommy Kramer's sweet. It's going to be awesome. I'm yeah. Really, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the night. Let's uh, go back to the game. A couple of things. 30 seconds left, first half, two timeouts. They took a knee. They said, we're just going to go into the half. Is that Zimmer? Is that DiFilippo? Who's, uh, who does that fall on? I think it's Zimmer. And a lot of people pointed out during the week that I think it's the L.A. Rams employ a clock management like Yeah, coach. like a guy. They should have that. The Vikings need that. I mean, yep. they look lost. At, I mean, how do they... With the 30 seconds left or whatever and two timeouts, and two timeouts. at least get into field goal position. You play super Adam tackle, Thielen, you can score right, two touchdowns. Right, that. correct. Or Madden, you can score a lot more than that. Adam Thielen can get open for 15, then hit digs because your wide receivers were getting open. Absolutely. You got two timeouts, at least try. Giving up sucks. And I do it all the time. <laughs> but if you're the Vikings, don't give up. If you're the Vikings, don't yeah. give up. Uh, fourth and one. We were running the ball fine. We decided to go for it. Empty backfield. Yeah. That's DeFilippo. That's dumb. That yeah. was a dumb play. Think I think that? by then I'd given up. I mean, I really when by we then? watched, no, we watched were we only it, down four that time. Yeah, but we were watching <laughs> in Vegas, and you, they don't oh. they didn't have the sound on for it. You'd already given up. Yeah, they had the sound <laughs> on for the World Series that no one cares about. But yeah, yeah. it was uh, it was it was uh, it was just a weird game. I think those were the biggest points yeah. that, that bothered me. Uh, Adam Thielen, seven receptions, one hundred three yards, a touchdown. A stat, okay, so he's had over 100 yards now, eight games, ties the NFL record. Not just starting a season, yeah. ever. Uh, Calvin Johnson, Megatron, he could break it this week against the Lions. I'm not saying it doesn't mean as much, but there's another stat that I saw this week that made me say, maybe these receiving records aren't that big of a deal. Can you name the wide receiver who is the only person to have five games in a row with 100-plus yards and a touchdown? This is another record that Thielen has now tied and is can it, break this week. Is it Randy? No. Is it somebody I should know or should No, that's know? why I'm saying it's kind of a, it's like, it's Dante a Dante Stallworth. Uh, Patrick Jeffers, 1999 Carolina Panthers. Who? Who? I've never yeah. heard of that guy. See, five games in a row with 100 yeah, plus and a touchdown. Yeah, but still, though, in a passing league. Right, but that's yeah. 19 years ago. I we've think, become more of a it, passing league. That's why. Yeah, no, I think what Adam's doing is incredible because it's, like it's like when they had Adrian Peterson. Everyone knew he was getting the ball. And he still rushed for an MVP in 2012. Yeah. Everyone knows they're throwing to him. And you know it's like, especially in the, uh, the Sunday night game, he ran a couple of routes where Chris Collins were, you know, I don't think he's a Hall of Fame wide receiver. But even he said during the game, he's like, oh, my God, these are unbelievable routes. Yeah. Someone on social media who knows what they're talking about will point out every week how good of routes Adam Thielen runs. So they know he's getting the ball, and he still gets 100 yards. I think it's sensational. All right. Uh, we'll do our picks here by the end of the show, but let's talk a little bit Detroit Lions. They're 3-4. and four, No Golden Tate. I wanted to say that just because I thought you, Golden Tate, is one of the best names yeah. in the history of pro sports. Isn't Golden Tate sleep with everybody's wife? What? You think he worked at a health I... club? <laughs> Golden Tate. I thought you just like... No, but didn't he get in trouble for that in, like... I I think in Seattle, what kind like, of magazines do you read? <laughs> you don't want to know. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to know. But I, I just, no, I I just wanted he, to throw that in there because they traded they him got, to Philadelphia. I thought they got rid of him in Seattle because he like <laughs> slept with Russell Wilson's ex and then what? punched him or something. Wow, this is true, kids. Look it up. This is this and is true, kids. I think it's on Wikipedia. I, I think he's right? just a bad dude. All right. But they basically just gave him away. But then when you so, find out they got a third round pick for him. That's pretty good for yeah. Golden Tate. See, I, I wanted you to say it. I can't. Uh, it's not as funny Sunday as me. Morning. With you, it's, it's a lot well, that's You expect that out no, of me. You, you can say it. My uh, IQ is a sleep number. <laughs> Matthew Stafford, 18th in the league in yards, 14 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. He's been sacked 13 times. Is Matthew Stafford anybody to be afraid of right now? No. Matthew yeah. Stafford last week, how do you lose to Seattle at home? 
We watched. Yeah. Obviously, we 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 bet on that game, and, and you we remember lost that money. One? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, but how did he? He's so skittish half the time. One yeah. day you're like Matthew Stafford's a top five quarterback, and then, then the, the other day you're like he doesn't belong in the top twenty. He's such yeah. a mess. Well, but, he's uh, 18th in yards. So yeah. Well, he's I don't closer know. to 20. Yeah, he's just I don't know. You can't trust him. That's the thing with him. You don't know which Matt Stafford you're going to get, but. This, I'm sure you have it in your notes because you're way more prepared than I am. I, I might. I the Vikings know. have never beat the Lions at U.S. Bank Stadium. What? Yeah. I did not have that in my notes. Yeah. And now I'm, just, hope, now I'm discouraged. That might make me change my picks by the end of the yeah, show. Yeah, they've never beat them at home. <laughs> uh, the Vikings defense. I think. There are three teams that are top ten in yards that they give up and top ten in yards they gain. So potent offense, potent defense. Three teams. The Vikings are one of them. Can you name the other two? Baltimore? No. Potent offense and defense. Oh, uh, Rams? Ten. Rams are one. Pittsburgh? Nope. I'll give you one more and then I'll just give it to you. AFC or NFC? NFC. Packers? Chicago Bears. Oh! The Bears. Yeah, so they're Bears, Vikings, Rams. Right. Yeah, Top okay. 10, both offense and defense. Makes sense. I just thought you'd like that little nugget. I, I do. Know. I put it in my notes. I love nuggets. All right. So we'll do our picks before the end of the show. But if you want to do pints and pigskins, come here Thursdays through Sunday all season long from noon to 6 p.m. You can throw your best spiral. You can score up to 25 bucks in free slot play. You could win $10,000. Free slot play if you are the season's highest single day scoring uh, total. Game day pick and play from 7 to 11.45 Sundays all season long. You can come in here every Sunday morning this season. Make your picks for a shot at the jackpot. Guests can play here at Mystic Lake or at Little Six. No. All right, should we get John Creasel up here? Duh. Introduce him, you wanna say it? Your yeah, best buddy? one of the greatest human beings of all time, John M. Creasel. Thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate you coming here. Uh, I feel like this is a weird interview because I know that you and Paul are such good friends. I almost feel like I'm invading in like your, your personal time that you just wanna hang out here at Mystic and have a good time. I saw him a bunch this weekend. Yeah, so you fire were away with whatever you got. I know everything <laughs> I don't, about him. Well, that's what, you know everything about him. Uh, actually, he's a guest that you got. Yeah. Well, I asked him, and every time, any time I ever need something from him, he helps me out. Yeah. yeah. So he's yeah, gonna get. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he's one of the greatest. And he also wrote a sweet book. Go get his go. book. Still yes. standing. New edition. Where do I get this? Uh, you can get it at Amazon.com, Itascabooks.com, JohnMCreasel.com nice. as well. Yes. You got your own website. That's I awesome. do, yeah. Uh, for the people who don't know you or haven't listened to K-Fan, how do you sum up what led you to that book? Uh, so I was injured in a bomb blast in Iraq in 2006. I lost both of my legs, but I lost two of my best friends. Yeah. It was something that obviously changed my life forever. I'll never forget waking up on the ground after the blast, seeing my injuries and thinking, this is it, I'm going to die. So the fact that my friends saved my life, the doctor saved my life, it's changed my outlook. And that's why every day is a gift. Every day I wake up, I feel so thankful to be alive. So every day is a gift. It is. You have an amazing story. It's in the book. Not only that, that you served our country, you lost your legs, lost your friends. You come back, you serve again, but in office. What was that? What led you to that decision? I mean, uh, and I, I know, I, I'm not trying to be critical. I'm saying... No. You live life and it's a gift, and then you said, I'm still gonna give back to the people of Minnesota. There was, a, uh, there was a void when I retired from the Army. It wasn't totally on my terms, so I wanted to find something to fill it. I didn't know what it was gonna be, and then I was approached in 2010 and asked to run for office. And so I, I thought, what better way to serve again than serve my community? One of my favorite sayings that you have, John, is anytime anybody asks you about your injury, you always say the only PT PTSD I have is from the Minnesota Vikings. And as I know you well enough to know how true that is. It's true. And we watched the game last week and it was just hideous. It was so hideous. And I, we knew before halftime, once, once the fumble return, they punch it in quickly. Yeah. And then we don't try to score. You could just sense, you could Give feel it, it. And I'm like, yeah. here we go again. Yeah, it was, uh, it was one of those games where you, you just had this, even though we were in Las Vegas and we were super excited about the Vikings, there was part of it where you're like, they, we have too many injuries. The Saints are way too good of a team. They're on fire. Here we go again with how good the Saints are. But it just felt like oh. that right when the game started. Right. It felt like they were robo-doping us. Yeah. Like they, and oh. we punched ourselves out. Yeah. And then after halftime, we saw, I mean, they, the game was over. Yeah. Paul says he hates the Saints, one of the teams that he hates the most. And he said, you hate them more. Oh, my God. Is it all because of 2009? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, is, that is it. That and the fans. 
they're just they're Are now they as bad the as Philadelphia. E no Eagles fans passed. <laughs> uh, and now probably Gophers fans, but uh, <laughs> but just absolutely those people. And after '09, soccer fans. Made. See, it's on the show. I don't want to steal your bit, but if you want to run with it, go ahead. Yeah, well, you can I, say it. I, Gophers fans have now passed soccer fans for the worst. The sensitivity. Yeah, they're the most sensitive. Yeah. See, yeah. I. <laughs> yeah, the thing with soccer fans is John and I know eventually they've just gotten tired of us. Yeah. They just don't acknowledge. Which is fine. Which is the key. Which, don't, right. Don't that's what you guys want. Encourage. You're trying to. Yeah. yeah. Gopher we're fans. Gophers fans. If you're like, oh, you're look stuck at with the beautiful fans. sunshine, row the boat. They're like, you shut up about yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> I didn't say anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Leave them alone. They're the most triggered group on the planet. Oh my yeah. God. Millennials are Why? most triggered. That, yeah. I don't know because it's their thing and they've been bad forever. Right. I mean, we. Justin Gard says all the time, you'd be bitter too if the team you like has sucked for 60 plus years. Yeah. Or the biggest turnout of any fans in that stadium has been for the Minnesota United. Right. Yeah, so soccer's yeah, bringing people and go yeah. for football. Yeah, right. that is odd. Oh, I never thought of that. That that would make me really upset if I was a Gopher football fan and the yep. biggest crowd was a soccer. Hey, game. good yeah. thing yeah. we're not though. Yeah, yeah. thank God. <laughs> hey, you, correct. you guys yeah. win in both of those. You're not <laughs> Gophers, not soccer. So what do you like about this game? You know, we got the Lions. The Lions have never they 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 beat us every time in U.S. Bank Stadium. It's Somebody one of those, looked that up. I feel like that's no, a lie. No, it's true. It's, it's true. true. It's true. Yep, yeah. It's true. true. Yep. Yeah, they beat them oh. every Last time. year, Dalvin Cook got hurt. Yeah, Thielen but, fumbled. Yeah, then was, they, it, was the first year they lost. Remember, they, they had an opportunity oh. going down to score, and I think they... Didn't go into overtime, and yeah, then it was then that Prater, acrobatic... Yeah, Nick Swartzen's body double kicked the extra point. Or the, <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, they've yeah. never won in U.S. Bank Stadium. Yep. So it'll be, I mean, it'll be a great environment. People should be excited to kind of forget about last week, but these are the games, and as we know, there's eight games left. you got to win almost all Next of them. three against the division. Yeah, you got to win the them all. got to win division. You, you have yeah. to win the next three. Yeah. Otherwise... We're looking at a wild card. Yeah, which is not good. No. Then you got to no. go to on St. Road. Louis. You got to go to LA. You got to go to one of these places. St. Louis you doesn't want a football go. team. Sorry. Uh, I, yeah, LA. I, that was a good. Well, I always think the Rams are in St. Louis. <laughs> I know. I still yeah, do. I love yeah. when he, the Rams. And the Chargers. You got to go on the road. Weird, St. Louis. Sorry. You got to go to LA Isaac or Bruce. Um, New Orleans. Right. You, you don't want to do that. Two difficult places. You do not want to do that. <laughs> right. We're looking at best case scenario right now win the division, and we have a home game in the wild card round. And then we still have to go, like you said earlier, we have to go on the road twice if we want to go to the Super Bowl. It's a yeah. two tough teams. Do you, you guys talk this much sports when you're together on your uh, free time? Yeah, we swear a lot more. Though. Yeah, swear at least a I ton. do. Yeah. Well, our yeah. YouTube show, if you want to stick around, we swear in that. You can. Well, I, technically, we, do, we still have a crowd here. Yeah, I don't really But we said yeah. we can say what we want. We just. Eh. Yeah. Anyway, our YouTube show. Yeah, you're more than welcome to join us, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I might be Stay as long some as you grease want. on the slot yeah, machine. Yeah, some some start grease. up the fryers, get greasy. Yeah. Is that like a good luck thing, or is that just a play? Out? Like, do it people is. call it because your last name Creasel? It was the grease like a. Oh, I don't even know how the grease thing started. Dog, it was really? Called, uh, it was in a Las trailer Vegas. Park Boys bit. Oh yes, oh, and then it just yeah. kept oh, going. Oh yeah, bubbles was yeah. greasy. Oh, yeah, yeah, everything's right, greasy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you're a motivational speaker too. Not yes. just the book. You speak. When you go and talk to somebody, kids or groups, anybody. Anybody. What's the weirdest question or the best question that you've gotten? Probably from kids who haven't aren't old enough to serve our country yet. That what, have they? Uh, they have some insightful questions. They have bad yeah, questions. Yeah, they're always good because the kids are the sweetest. They're in, they're an open book. Yeah. So they'll a lot of times ask about the prosthetic legs, yeah. or they'll ask about phantom pain. And I don't really have much of it anymore. A few times a year, and it's very minor. Wow. But they, the stuff they know, where I'm like, how did you know about yeah. phantom pain? Yeah. Wow. So yeah, it's it's fun though going around and sharing my story has been therapeutic, it's helpful. Um, yeah, it's just fun, I get to meet a lot of awesome people. What's the next step? Uh, or where are you at now and what are you I, thinking uh, about? I just the... got married and so I don't- Congratulations. Just, thank you, uh, she's very lucky. <laughs> I think you the, might be pretty lucky there too. I'm super yeah, lucky, a... yes, I outkicked my coverage, even with prosthetic you legs. You can't. Um, <laughs> he just said even with prosthetic legs. Yeah, I, no, I'm I, always- I, I, know, I know you. I think this is the only time in my life though I could say I wouldn't change a thing. Right now, life is as perfect as it could be. I, I'm, I'm so happy. Um, I ask you all the time, so I know the answer to this, but you know, for the people out there, uh, how do you, what do you do? Is there ever a point where you feel sorry for yourself or Never. ever look at, and why is nope. that? Because we've, we've, we, I've been with you yep. and you've run into some, you know, war vets who are like, I'm just really down and out. And how do you, how do you, what do you tell them? That it could, it always could be a lot worse. I lost mm. two of my best friends in that blast. 
it would be really crappy of me to feel sorry for myself when I got a second chance at life that my friends didn't mm. get. And so, we, you know, a lot of people that served, it could have been them. It could have been the person uh, next to you. You never know. It's a roll of the dice. And so the fact that I'm mm. still here and the fact that those other people that are having a tough day, we all go through it. Um, life is so good. Life is a blessing. Sometimes it feels like a lot of extra work to find the silver lining in the cloud, but it is so much worth it. If there are people out there watching, how would we book you for a speech? JohnMCreasel.com is where all of my details are found. And uh, yeah, I would love the opportunity. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, every time you tweet about it, I try and say I would never show up. And, I, don't, uh, I love people, it. People, <laughs> people, get mad. people get mad, but I'm like, yeah, it's a joke. Yeah, it's a it's joke. A joke. And you're funny. retweeting yeah, it. Correct. Yeah, correct. You yeah. get it. Yeah, you're I not a it. gopher fan. You don't no. get triggered by that. Go to the website, get the book, get him to come and speak. Thank you so much for your time, appreciate and thank it. you for your service. You got it. You're thank a fantastic you. person. Thank you. I appreciate it, brother. You're okay. I'm a Love you. Love you. John Creasel was a fantastic guest. Thank yeah. you for bringing him. Yeah. He yeah. is amazing. Yeah, get his book. Get his book. Go to the website. Yeah. Have him come speak. Yeah, he's he's really good yeah. at that. And like I, when I asked him, and I, I love that answer, even though I, I it's a rhetorical question because I know the answer. Yeah. I've seen him with you know other people who've been at war, and he always says that. He's like... Listen, I know it's cliche, it could be worse, but he's so spot on and he's got such a good attitude for kids, anybody, who, you know, down and out. It's a wonderful story. You can tell he's not just saying it, no, he's living it. That's exactly how he lives his life. Except when he gets mad at me for no reason and runs away, but that's when, all When you cost issue. him money at Las Vegas. That's not me, that's my brother. <laughs> all right, on a different note, one of our favorite games, Would You Rather... I'm in, yeah. I'll, You're in. I'll do all anything. Right. Uh, did you hear the story? Do you pay attention to the local news at all? Sometimes. Sometimes? Yeah. When you're feeling it? Yeah. Uh, Jesse Diggins, local gold medal winner. Do you know this story? Do you not know this story? No. She was training, because she's the uh, cross-country skier. She was training with those, like, ski rollerblade type things near yeah. Afton. A driver buzzes by her really close, breaks, does all this stuff. She says she could have been killed. She had a friend with, she stops, writes down the license plate number, calls the cops. The cops call this guy and say, hey, you did this to this person. And they warned him. No ticket, no visiting him to warn. He almost killed two pedestrians as they're roller skiing. One's an Olympic gold medalist hero. Would you rather this gentleman maybe uh, have a stiffer penalty or would you rather that uh, karma come and bite him in the... No, I think he deserves a stiffer penalty. What yeah. are you doing? Obviously, he's yeah. either couple things here. He's either all the above, and he's either drunk he wasn't. or on his phone. No, he was doing it intentionally. Oh, really? He, he buzzed her, then he was braking, going slow, they would get close. And well, then yeah, he how would, do you like, not? But yeah, how he, do you, he was intentionally they, messing the with The cops them. didn't even go over to the house? No, they said they gave him a call. No, you instantly go over to that house. Yeah. I don't care that, and I'm, she's great. Yeah. I don't care that it's her. If it happens it to anybody, anybody sure. you do that. When you go for you a bike ride. How do you know that? Well, I, I'm sure you never see me outside, yeah. obviously. But with the helmet on and you yeah, on your the the spandex. Yeah, helmets don't fit. But... Yeah, I don't care who it is. Go over there. How yeah. do you know the guy's not on drugs or drunk or texting? Or he's doing, obviously, like you said, he's doing this on purpose. Yeah. I absolutely. All right. No, go arrest that guy. Nice. I like it. Uh, Derek Rose, 50-point game, tears of joy after the game. Would you rather see heroic, dramatic wins with players the likes of Derek Rose on the, on the Wolves, or would you rather see a balanced team boring but winning all the time that's a really good question i don't know because we've never really had that here yeah i don't know other than like 2000 and you know three four and five before they traded garnett whenever that was we've never had consistently good basketball yeah i'd rather have the Derek rose thing i you haven't watched a basketball game yet this year really i feel horrible for all the people that work for the timberwolves Anybody who has to sell season tickets or tickets for the Wolves should get a massive raise. It's the hardest because thing to sell Because of what they're going town. through right now? Yeah, no one cares. I mean, yeah. I want to know what the, what the uh, attendance was that when he did that on Halloween. It couldn't have been a lot. Uh, it looked pretty empty on the end. And ends. then Jimmy Butler, who obviously wasn't there, can't sit on the bench with yeah. his teammates. His general soreness. No, I... I obviously, it's Thursday night, Sunday I, morning. But I love the Derrick Rose thing. I teared up. 
when he came out of that huddle before the game ended, and you could see that he'd been yeah. crying. Oh yeah, I love that story. Now I know he's got a. Uh, I think Let, it's some. Just, of, yeah, yeah, I get that. I know. I, I know. get that. But pe- people, there are a couple people that are like, "Wow, whatever." He did this. Well, he didn't do it, yeah. as we know. Right. But yeah, you gotta. I mean, he he's the youngest MVP in the NBA, full of young stars. Yeah. And then he tears his one knee, tears the other one, then tears the other one. And he scored 50 points. It was sweet. And it was I a love dramatic I loved, performance. Yeah, I love. I would that. rather have those two because it's yeah. so. It, it, I, take all the other stuff no out. One cares. It was You're uplifting on the court. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. Uh, the Eastridge football player. I don't want to say his name. He's a minor. But yeah. you see the story. Ah, uh, yeah. You pay attention to it. Uh, somebody would, who would I know you really rather, well. I know a lot of inside information. You do. About this story. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to? Just bef- should I ask well, the question, or you just want yeah, to throw go it ahead out? Ask the question. Uh, okay, I was just going to say the Centennial player. He blindsided the four-game suspension. The family saying it's an injustice. Starting a GoFundMe page, trying to go to the courts to sue the Minnesota State High School League. Would you rather this just go away and he serves the four-game penalty, or would you rather that they uh, play it out in the courts and try to fight to get him back well, on the field? First off, I don't know why you sue. And I, I don't think this is the first time he's done something like this. Yeah, so you... I think, from what I've been told, is a, he's encouraged to act like this by his parents. What? Yeah, I heard his parents are terrible people. And okay. if that's the case, well, then who gives a crap? Is that your inside information? Yeah, I mean, if your parents are the ones that are that think you do no wrong and then you harm someone else... Yeah. The, I, I mean, how... I don't know how, how old is this kid. 16, 17? No, he's a senior Whatever, and he wants to go and play college is, But football. you got to think this is... He's a product of his parents. Yeah. I don't think this is a first-time thing. And I know, I know that it isn't a first time. We know thing. it's not because he kicked a player and got suspended earlier this year. I think year, he's which been doing this his suspension. whole life playing football. So he's a Todd playing football. I think it's just these parents are monsters, and you're gonna go. Well, what do you mean? Yeah. You're gonna not. You're gonna. You're gonna sue. Yeah. Why would you sue? Your because, dad's a lawyer. You'd think that you right. Would, that uh, you because did. you turned around and you basically headhunted this. He blindsided the quarterback. Right. And now you're gonna sue because they threw you out. No way. That's. That's Serve the four-game suspension, be no, done. No, no. Never let him play again. Oh. And his story about, well, I want to finish with my friends. I don't care. If you've played don't, football that much, then you know go, not to do yeah, that. Yeah, don't go out headhunting. All right, time for our picks. But before we do our picks, remember we announced last week, we are now on iTunes. Scott and his uh, engineering genius yeah. has taken a TV show, turned it into a, uh, a podcast. So we're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We've got our own website now. We've got our own YouTube channel. I think we're pretty soon going to have some real estate developments. Can't wait. We're going to have everything. I can't wait. Scott does it all. Movie complexes. We're going to have all, can't all wait. of it. All yeah, of it. we'll be printing cash. Your picks. Uh, I'm going to pick the Minnesota Vikings to win. I think they'll win well. Uh, uh, well they are five I think point, they'll do well. Five-point favorites. You think they cover? I think they'll, yeah. I think they'll get some guys back. I think this is a uh, make-good game. I think they get better doing this, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm also going to go Vikings. Last week, I said they win by 10. This week, I say they cover. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say ten, but I think they cover five. All right, that's going to do it for this week. You got anything else you want to add? Nah. All right, we'll see you next week right here on the CW Twin Cities.